So we've known actually for about 150 years that iron is, is actually quite important in sort of the pathology of MS. So we started to look at this uh, using MRI, which can be used to detect such iron, but of course in vivo. And we wanted to see whether this starts very, very early in the disease process or whether it's something that accumulates with time as, as the disease progresses. So we started to scan patients who had so-called clinically isolated syndrome. So this is the first attack which may turn out to be MS, or in fact, it may turn out to be something else. Uh, about half of these patients who have a, an initial clinically isolated syndrome will be diagnosed with MS eventually. The other half will be diagnosed with other diseases. So we started taking these patients provided by the MS clinic at the London Health Sciences Center and scanning them to see whether there was abnormal iron in their brain. And one of the very interesting findings we saw was, in fact, there is a lot of iron well above what you would expect for age match controls in the MS patients' brains. So we had also studied uh, the diameter of their draining veins, and so we were able to look at a correlation between these, and we found, in fact, none. So while as the iron in the brain correlates with the disability in the subjects, the iron in the brain does not correlate in any way with the actual diameter of the jugular veins in these patients. So the Zamboni hypothesis is incorrect insofar as iron is related to some kind of obstruction in, in your veins, but uh, the fact is there is iron at the very earliest stages uh, of MS. <laughs>